Okay, welcome to session 12 of Waterdeep Dragon Heist. And let's see. Last time when we played, um, you had already recovered the stone. And you went back to the manor, and while Damon was getting attuned to it and so forth, um, once that happened, you all learned that you needed three keys in order to get into the Vault of Dragons. And the first key was bagpipers playing a, uh, or performing your beardly face, which was a, uh, Dwarven Duet. Uh, the second key was gems worth a thousand gold pieces. Uh, the third was a cask of Dwarven Ale, which you already had in the bar. Uh, you learned the dragon's name, and you learned that he was an adult gold dragon, and he did possess the... Um, Staff of Dragonkind. I'm sorry, the Dragon Staff of Agorn or something like that. And you all did manage to uh, chip in some money and buy the gems that you needed. Uh, you've taken auditions for bagpipers um, you talk to Rainier about um, you know possibly going with you to help recover his father's name but you spend um, the rest of that day uh, preparing for this mission and Rainier tells you, you know, he'll meet you at the bar the next afternoon, next evening, because, you know, you really don't want to do this in the daytime if the dragon does let you take out the gold. You know, people will see, and that's always a bad sign. So uh, I'm going to make sure you all have had a long rest. Okay, the bar continues to be popular. And, you know, uh, during the night you attend to some bar business while you're making uh, preparations. Uh, the place is, uh, uh, you know, it, it's the hottest new joint in town, and it is hopping. You get your rest. Next day comes, uh, you tend more to the bar and personal errands throughout the day and in the evening uh, it's getting time for Rainier to show up and you know you're all sitting around watching uh, you know your clientele in the bar and just noticing they're coming and going and you start to notice that, hey, Rainier's running a little late. It seems like he should have been here just a little bit ago. And you continue waiting, and, you know, about 20 minutes later, uh, you see Rainier kind of stagger in through um, the front door. 
and he falls to the ground face first and sticking out of his back you can see three crossbow bolts and the crowd in the bar starts screaming what do you do I hope you don't expect those crossbow bolts to explain your absence. You still should have been here on time. <laughs> Cure wounds. I'll try to calm down. My okay. Uh, you you cast uh, Cure Wounds on Rainier, and you can see that he's uh, he's alive. But, you know, he, he took some uh, pretty critical hits with the uh, crossbow bolts. And, Anna, you're doing your best to calm the crowd down, but, you know, they are all looking okay. for another exit to leave the bar. They all right, since I'm a bard, do I have any, any bard skills that can help me to, you know, calm Uh, you can try, you can try uh, 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 persuasion or intimidation if you'd like. Okay, I'll try this pers persuasion. And while she's rolling that, is uh, anyone going to rush out to the street? Yeah, I will. Oram will run out. Okay, okay. Uh, you can see um, there are some shocked onlookers, and across the street from the bar laying in the street, you can see a uh, couple of crossbows. And uh, as you can imagine, there's a lot of chaos. Uh, you know, you've had the fireball go off in front of your bar. Now you have a former open lord's son that has been shot with a crossbow right in front of your bar. You'd think people would stop coming here. <laughs> and Anna... Your attempt at calming the crowd goes horribly, horribly wrong. And within a minute, everyone has pushed by the door. Uh, you know, you all did manage to uh, drag Rainier, drag Rainier out, of the out of the doorway. Okay, I rolled a one. <laughs> uh, not much better. <laughs> I hope we didn't put her in charge of our public relations. <laughs> but, uh, you know, the bar is now empty. Um, you're not seeing anyone flee from the scene. Uh, there are a couple witnesses that, you know, are pointing down the street. I'm sure the crossbows are have their proper serial numbers, right? So we can just check them against the register. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, you might want to get them and check. <laughs> sure. Bri will go out and join Orm on the street and walk over to the crossbows to see if there's anything, you know, that stands out. And, I, no, they are just your typical crossbows when you get over to them. Um, people are still excited on the street. Um, just from what you're hearing, um, it, it sounds like they were describing Zentorums, the Zents from their manner of dress and so forth. 
but you have no positive they dressed like them but nobody saw any of the snake tattoos or you know the typical affiliation markings Rainier, on the other hand, looks up and, you know, he uh, painfully says, uh, you know, I guess that'll teach me to be late. If I was there, I would agree with him. <laughs> but uh, he's in a pretty bad shape, and you're starting to think that maybe the arrows have been coated with poison. Or maybe he just doesn't want to come with us, was he? Does anybody have a... a Lesser restoration on him. Okay, um, yeah, you can, uh, you cast Lesser Restoration on him, and you can see that some of the color is starting to come back into his face and so forth. And... You know, he kind of sits up and slides over against the wall, and, you know, he's just leaning up against it, and, <laughs> you know, he's uh, thanking you all for your assistance. And, you know, he... Uh, like I said, he, he took uh, a couple of uh, really bad hits. And, you know, by now you've got the bolts out of him. You started the healing process. Uh, you've cured the, uh, the poisoning that he was under the effect of. And... You know, he's he's like, guys, I would really like to help you out tonight, but I'm going to sit this out. I knew it. And really? And he maybe used two spells to find that out. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, hey, I'll be nice and only count it as one. one. <laughs> uh, but, um, uh, you know, he, he's recounting his day. And, you know, he doesn't remember being followed. Uh, there was no signs of him. He had no contacts with I any shady characters other than yourselves today you know. and you know he was uh, just walking up the bar and the next thing he knows he's got three crossbow bolts in his back you have not had a good day uh, no he has not <laughs> But anyway, uh, he, he gives you a family ring that, you know, anyone that knows anything about nobility would recognize it 
as being from a member of the Never Remember family. Which may or may not help you in negotiations. Well, it's better than nothing. That depends. I might be able to use that. Everyone hates his dad. Yeah, but uh, the dragon is in the dad's employ. <laughs> um, oh yes, uh, the you were out last week. The um, Lord never remember um, bribed the dragon. There's uh, you know this dragon spell around the city of Waterdeep that does not allow um, dragons to pass. That, you know, it's their own little dragon dragon shield spell around the city. Uh, Lord Never Remember cut a deal with this dragon to give him a dragon staff which would allow him to move freely through water deep in exchange for guarding the vault. And you have learned the dragon's name, which is like Arnax. And you know the location of the vault. Uh, you know everything you need to get into the vault and you have acquired the items that you need. And there was a uh, major discussion and just so we were clear, you're not stealing the gold, you're planning on returning it to the city and collecting the finder's fee, correct? What? Right, I'm not here. Yeah, I said the same. They're all corrupt here. They deserve nothing. And Damon, while he was, uh, when you recovered the Stone of Galore, he cast the uh, Legend Lore spell using the stone. And it, it revealed to him the information. And while under the influence of the spell, he saw a vision of two separate alcoves in the vault. Uh, one alcove was piled high with gold coins. The other alcove had a uh, scattering of gems on the floor. And he also revealed um, the the dragon staff uh, gives you advantages while you're holding it on saving throws against spells and breath weapons of dragons, as well as any creature of the dragon type. Um, it allows you to move through the dragon ward. It, any creature of the dragon type that you touch with the staff can move through the dragon ward for a time that you specify or until you touch it again with the staff. And you can also cast the command spell. And if you target a dragon with this casting, uh, the dragon has disadvantage on its saving throw. So, uh, are we ready to go to the vault? Yeah, I am. Yes, as ready as we're going to be. And Bri leveled up. Uh, yep. I'm just finishing leveling up, yeah. I, I can do that. We head to the... Oh, that's right.
that's no problem. And I'm going to go ahead and give you all another long rest to reset the spell that you lost by finding out Rainier wasn't coming. <laughs> Big bum. Question is, who shot him? Someone that wants the gold, probably. Demon. Especially in front of your bar. Demon. Or the other bar owner. He didn't have any idea who? Uh, no, he was just, uh, you know... Headed toward the bar, started to walk in, you know, popping up the stairs and pop, 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 three crossbow bolts. Okay, well. Eyewitnesses on the scene, scene do report, report three zimp looking what? individuals on the right, okay. scene. So, somebody knows something's going on tonight. I'm guessing if we do manage to, to get through this, there's going to be a bunch of Zents waiting. Possibly. We just need to be ready. And let me make a quick note. Okay, um, you all do manage to, uh, what was the name of that monument in Waterdeep that the vault was located near? Anyway, um, you all are... You find the hidden entrance, and it it leads into a tunnel, and you start headed start heading deep underground. And although you're underground, the vault is lit by these streams of sunlight that are pouring down from the ceiling. And you can catch motes of dust, you know, floating in the room. Um, wait, sorry. <laughs> uh, I was on the wrong story tab. Okay, uh, you see a 20 foot high, 20 foot wide stone corridor ending before a set of adamantine double doors bearing dwarvish ruins. Uh, the doors have neither handles nor hinges, but there is writing on them. And um, the writing itself reads, the three keys bring them forth. Right, okay. let's rip out those keys. Let's put those three things there that we got, the, the dwarven, dwarven ale, ale and the gems and... Uh, Do we yeah, have our yeah. bagpiper with us? Uh, yes, uh, you, you do have a set of bagpipers, because it is a duet. It's two of them. <laughs> now, to discuss the bagpipers, uh, they have no idea what they're doing there. Uh, do you want to blindfold them on the way? Because, you know, you oh, yeah, we don't want anyone else to be able to find them. damn gold. Yeah, that's a good point. We should, um, I don't know, make, can anybody think of a cover story? 
We brought actually It's a secret lore that we're trying to see how they play. Okay. He doesn't want his identity to be known and then stick him in the in in the uh our hired uh the carriage pony yes. yeah. take him back to the bar. Okay. Sounds good. We'll let him know later in the week. Uh you roll up the barrel of ale and you put the gems on top and you help the bagpipers get up to the door and you tell them to play and they start playing this duet and it, you know you've heard better you've heard worse <laughs> but uh, it, when the last note is played um of the doors part and they slide back into the walls and ahead of you you can see this vast chamber And you can see these age-worn columns that are supporting these crumbling stone bridges 60 feet overhead. And the ceiling rises another 20 foot beyond that. And set into the alcoves are 12 sets of double doors made of iron. And each door is 10 foot wide, 10 foot high, and embossed with images of dwarven warriors in plate armor. And you have, have the two bagpipers that have no idea other than a loud noise just happened right beside them. <laughs> I'll scream in one of their years, run for your life! <laughs> no, we were sending them back to the bar. But they'll know how to get back here if we send them back. They're blindfolded. They're, how are they getting back to the bar if they're blindfolded? In our uh, horses. In the wagon. wagon, yeah, the carriage. So the carriage guy knows where this is. <laughs> but he doesn't, he doesn't know, know what, what this is. is. He doesn't care as long as we give him uh, booze and an easy job. Uh, yeah, he's he's pretty loyal to you. We gave him the same story that we had a lord that that uh, told us that he wanted to hear this certain song. And gave him the night off with an all-you-can-drink pass. <laughs> well, considering the bar has no clients right now, it shouldn't be that hard. Okay, but uh, you have the the door is open, the entrance. Well, we're gonna go. All right, let's go. Are we going in stealthy and looking for traps, or am I leading the way? Charge! After you, look for traps. I look for traps. Just who's, who's got the best? Uh, oh yeah, Harry. Now I wish I would have kept the feet. Oh well. <laughs> So, uh, so, Harry will keep his eyes open with everybody else for anything that looks unusual. Bride's going to go knock on one of the doors. Okay, uh, Bri, uh, you're knocking on the door and nothing happens. Doors are so rude. Harry draws both of his short swords. 
Is it lit in here? He said it was like sunlight coming down. Um, a, a year above ground, uh, you know, the door's open. Uh, yeah. Um, and we're later at night, so yeah, it is not lit. I'll cast light on my shield. I'm a gloom stalker. Okay. Um, as you move further in, uh, you know, you're looking up, and like I said, 60 feet overhead, you can see these crumbling stone bridges, and the middle bridge itself um, has a 15-foot section missing. This stuff's falling apart. And then there's alcoves in all these doors. Don't worry about the doors. No one's home. Sorry, there's doors in all the alcoves. <laughs> and, Pry, when you were knocking on the door, uh, you realized that, hey, it, it, it's a real door, but it, it's... You know, there's nothing behind it. Uh, it's it's a set of false doors. But, you know, you're not finding anything of interest or value in this room. So I guess we go to the next room then. I start opening doors. Uh, yeah, um, that mask a little bit too much, but over here by this door, Bry, uh, it is a real door. And I'll knock again. It'd be rude just to walk in. Boom, 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 and you hear nothing in return. Lousy dwarves. And you open the door and you see a, a, a smaller room. Um, it looks like it's got a set of stairs going down. And Anna, you have no problem opening that door where you're at if you'd like. And you can see... Um, Anna, that on the north wall is a fresco, 20-foot square, that is depicting dwarves battling goblins. All right. And I need you... You have to roll something? And... Uh... Yeah, Wait for it, it's coming. That probably was not. <laughs> okay. Um, you just become so enthralled with, with this fres fresco that's been painted on the wall and you're seeing all the intricate little details and the... Um, in the painting and you know the dwarves spilling goblin blood and you just think it you know the artist used such a great shade of red and okay blood 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 you move up closer to get a look at it okay and Blood, 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 blood. <laughs> yeah, uh, you are uh, enthralled. <laughs> okay. And nothing else is mattering to you right now except looking at that fresco. 
What are the rest of y'all doing? Classic horror movie, like on the other side of the wall, not noticing anything. Right. Really, Harry? You're just going to leave me there? I know. I'm so messed up. <laughs> no, <laughs> Harry, Harry will go and, hey, what's going on? Is she just, she like, just like, like transfixed on the painting? Yep. I'm just sitting there uh, just repeating blood, 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 blood all over. Okay, Harry, uh, you walk up, and for a moment, you can feel yourself drawn to this. But, uh, you know, logic wins out, and you think, you know, it's a nice painting, but it, it ain't that damn special. Yeah, I'm not getting pulled into the red rum. I'm going to grab her by the arm and lead her away. Thank you. I will grapple her back here if necessary and bring her around the corner. Uh, you know, she uh, she doesn't put up much fight, but she, um, you know, she is a little resistant to come with you. Oh, I sternly pull her along. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and... Uh, Anna, while Harry is pulling you, uh, you can't stop talking about this painting. Uh, it's the greatest thing that you've seen. Uh, you know, you think that you should take it. It would look so good hanging up in the bar that to, you want to take it now. <laughs> oh, we'll, we'll get to that. Come on, let's go. What? There's, a, there's one downstairs. I want to see this painting. This sounds awesome. <laughs> I say, yeah, that's a great idea. Let's go look at it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Bry, you walk right up to it. Okay, uh, Orm, let's get you to uh, make a uh, wisdom save, please. And Brian, oh boy! <laughs> uh, you agree with Anna? It is a great <laughs> damn thing. Or you know, we actually should bring this back to the bar. And uh, you go with uh, <laughs> you walk up, you walk and you too are charmed by this by painting. This painting. <laughs> It, this would be a perfect addition to our bar, seriously. Totally. Blood, 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 blood. You serious? Look, we've already got a ghost. Why not a painting that... Oh, I would uh, like to use my to reaction work. to help Armara see the painting for its worth. <laughs> That's better. <sighs> Harry says, don't look too deeply into it. Navarra gives it a second look and does better. Can I use my, um, uh, I don't know, maybe I should save my inspiration for later, but uh, I could maybe use this it. This is just the off. first room. <laughs> yeah, I know. That's why I said I should probably save it for later. Let's just grab the painting. <laughs> yeah. And probably starts to pull it down off the wall. Well, isn't sorry you said it was a fresco? Doesn't that mean like it's actually painted in? Oh, the that wall? yeah, that's right. What, is it like part of the wall? Uh, it's a fresco, but uh, let's see. We'll start prying out individual tile. We can reconstruct it. Absolutely. <sighs> Uh, yes, uh, you are correct. Uh, it is embedded into the wall. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's too bad. I mean, it, it, would, it would be a perfect tourist attraction for our bar, seriously. <laughs> and, and, you know, the more that you're looking at it and the more that you're seeing that it's actually tile in the wall, uh, 
you think it looks best where it's at, and you really just don't want to leave it. <laughs> well, Avara, we that's it. it. I guess we leave them here. Could Am I able to keep going on with the uh, with hair? <laughs> I guess not. Uh, by the time the other two have got. Uh, you know, charmed by it. Uh, you work your way back up, you know. Harry, let go Harry, of your, let go of your arm. Arm. And You're right back up. There. Okay. <laughs> Are we going to have to break this wall? I, I think I, might, yeah. Yeah. Don't touch the wall. I think you're probably going to have to. Can cantrips affect the wall? Uh, Careful, uh, you destroy it, they might turn on you. Yeah, I don't uh, know. The wall does have immunity to poison and psychic damage. Other than that, Other than it that. does have an armor class and hit points. <laughs> okay. What about cantrips that require a wisdom saving throw? <laughs> what? Most of my cantrips that are damaging require saving throws, not attack rolls. Okay. So you better go in and smash it with a hammer. Yeah. Who said that? Uh, you go smash it with your hammer and you see what they do. That's why I kind of would prefer to do a cantrip from back here. Yeah. Try it. Try uh, one. So as long as you're not charmed. Can you... Can you blind them? Cast darkness on our eyes or something like that? It's a level two spell. Well, okay. The op what about? Can you cast the opposite of light? I know they used to allow that. I don't know if they allowed that in this first. But... No. Okay. You're not worth. We're not worth a second level spell. We're worth a cantrip. Yeah. Right. No, you're just trying to save spells. Right. I know. But I mean, light used to be reversible. No, I think globe of darkness is a different spell. Oh. Okay. Uh, what about something else that would blind us, like um, color spray? Nope, not clear. I can either cantrip it, or I can, if if it can do a saving throw versus the wall. What about some kind of illusion? I don't think realistically an inanimate object has wisdom. Uh, yeah. That was my thought. Yeah. Well, it has resistance against psychic damage, doesn't it? So that it might have some kind of... Uh, uh, immunity, because it doesn't, because have, it a doesn't brain. have a brain. Oh, okay, I see. This is such a great painting. I really hope somebody doesn't cover it in something. Yeah, that might help. No, it wouldn't. It would be a shame if somebody painted over this or obscured it in any way. Look, they're trying to communicate to us. Sadly, oh, I have yeah. nothing. Ay, ay, ay. Look at slit your wrist, cut open an artery, start smearing on the wall. No problem. I guess we beat on the fresco. Uh, and the big E is uh, the fresco. <laughs> so you can well away. Not like that, I can't. And, you know, uh, as you swing and miss, uh, you kind of get Orem's attention, and Orem's like, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> you know what? Make you look better. I'm going to help you guys out. You guys want this in back in the bar? Uh, We're going to get it off the wall. I use swords, and I uh, take a hammer and a piton out. And uh, I'm going to go over and I'm going to start carving pieces out of the wall and 
Bri, you collect these and you put them in your backpack and don't mix them up so we can put it back on the wall when we get back to the tavern, okay? That sounds like way too much work. It's never too much work for somebody who wants to take this home. I'm pretty happy just sitting here. Okay, uh, you managed to start carving out pieces and, you know, you're being none too gentle, but you are being discreet. <laughs> uh, you can just draw your damage. <laughs> Look at all those crack tiles! And... Eventually, you manage to get uh, a, a ten-foot section of it. You pretty much got it split in half, and you've got it separated from the wall. And at once that last chunk hits the floor, you all are suddenly like. Uh, what am I doing? You know, we don't no, want this we don't. painting back at the bar. <laughs> oh, good. good. I still do. <laughs> this is room one. Barum just Barum walks just away and he goes, I like comics better. More of a comics guy. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'll get my swords back out. And let's see. Do you come in, Brad, or are you stand by the wall? I don't know. It's pretty comfortable over here. And let's see. I'm going to make a note. Combat tracker for note taking. Okay, uh, you walk around the corner and you see a set of expertly carved stairs going up. So is Damon technically with us, or? Uh, no, he is, is he not. Sleep? <laughs> uh, uh, he went to uh, help Rainier get home, or you know, to the family doctor. After he shot him in the first place.
Okay, uh, you enter stairs over in the hall. Close out half a dozen damn windows. Okay, uh, you come up the stairs round the corner and you are in this 20 foot high hall and you can see that there are three pillars running the length of the hall and they have been carved to resemble war hammers and their square heads are pressed against the floor. Um, further down the wall you can see a cracked mosaic and it depicts a dwarf smith at a forge and it's uh, crafting dwarves out of black metal and diamonds and this mural has broken off the wall and you know you can see a lot of it is scattered uh, scattered on the floor and it's forming this heap of uh, shattered tile we should probably collect it too and you can see three archways that lead to the east and through the archway are the crumbling bridges that you saw. So we were able to see these from upstairs? Uh, fr from the level when you walked in, uh, the pillars on the other map looking up, you were able to see it. Okay. You can see the room that you were just in downstairs. All right. I'm running to grab some mosaic tile. Really? Yeah. Of course. Uh, okay, while Bry's running down, <laughs> uh, what are the rest of you all doing? I want to check out the room, see if yeah. it looks like He's the bridges excited. will support weight. I'm just exploring the board. Get... Uh, yeah, looking at the bridges, um... You know, the middle one does have a 15-foot gap, which would require a jump. But uh, they're dangerous, but, you know, as long as you don't cross five people at a time, you might be safe. Harry, I'm going to move you right back up for a moment. <laughs> and dun, dun, dun. Bry, you are uh, collecting the tiles, and... Uh, you know, this fresco is has a little bit better artwork than the other, and but you're not that enthralled other than your own personal interest in it. <laughs> and Harry is, you know, as you're walking up and looking down at Bry, you know, acting like a kid, gathering his toys up off the floor. I you see something starting to um, gush out of the wall and it is this black substance and um, it looks like this heaving mound of sticky black sludge, sludge. and um, In the dim light, the, it, it appears to be little more than like a blot of a shadow. But it, it starts pouring out of the wall even faster, and it comes into this blob in the, in the middle of the floor. It's time to roll for initiative, people. <laughs> mm, 
Yum. Wow, everyone goes before the black pudding. <laughs> and Harry, you are the first to react. Yeah, something tells me that... Do I know anything about these things? Um, they are delicious to eat. Mm. Well, in that case, I'm gonna lick it. You know, uh, want like a nature check. Or uh, yeah, I was just looking, um... Yeah, you could try a nature check. Um, uh, you can recall sitting in a bar somewhere and, you know, a guy was telling a story about encountering this black Ooze. Just and, like his mom used to make. Uh, you can remember him talking about how tough it was, that it was immune to acid and cold and lightning and even slashing damage. Did they burn it? Harry quickly glances over to Brian and everyone else and says, uh, he says, uh, get back. This thing is unnatural. It will resist most damage. We needed to get fired. And I'm going to disengage and fall back 25 feet and uh, immediately sheath a sword and begin to uh, get a torch out. Okay. Uh, as you're coming back, you do remember the guy talking about how it engulfed uh, one of his party members to, and the dude wasn't able to escape and you know it was a slow and torturous death yeah I yelled at everybody get back this thing's unnatural and that's you know I'm going for the torch so I'm readying with my action I'm going to light a torch if I can okay and, and then I'll Brian, have to pass. Brian does not approve of burning the black pudding. It will not taste nearly as good when you're done. You prefer like a soft boil, you know, like a warm bath? Possibly. I bet it would be a lot friendlier if we just gave it a warm bath. Sure, he will disengage too. <laughs> I hope fireworks. <laughs> I'm sure he will start lighting a torch too. All right. Orum? Just a uh, game over the table, guys. I have no idea what works on this thing. My character's determined that it's fire that's going to do it based off if it wasn't one of the things that he recalls that was thwarted. Well, uh, you do know um, hey, you were a little drunk. Um, hey, you do um, you don't really recall how the how the party ended up defeating him, but you do know that being hit by it, the touch is acidic. The guy just pushed his friends in front of him. 
he was the fastest. All he had to be was the fastest. He never said he actually beat them. Just that some of his friends got devoured by them. Orm's the biggest, right? Yep. So I'm going to move right there. Bang the, my warhammer against my shield and and swing the warhammer right at him. Yeah, I think we'll just go. go. It's not a him. It's just a blob of black ooze, right? Uh, yeah, most likely. It's a pudding. It ain't pretty, so it's got to be a him. Uh, all right, so I'll mark it as well. So if he's attacking me, you can take the disadvantage off. Okay. But anyone else, anyone else, he attacks uh, when he can't attack me. He he is at disadvantage to attack someone else. Um. Yeah, I don't think I want to do anything else right now, so I think I'm done. Might want to move back. No, he's just, I'm just going to get opt. I'll just get opt. It's fine. <laughs> I take it you are moving back, Anna. Yeah, to that spot that I marked. And I will cast a fireball at it. It doubles in size. Sorry, what was that? Okay, never mind. Well, you hit. I did? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That is seven? Seven or better. <laughs> it is pretty big. And it's new, so I mean it's soft. Okay. And I yeah, the I point the in. Point. Wow, that was bad. <laughs> I'm amazed that I hit it at all. And move back a little bit. Coward. Okay, well, let's see. So if he attacks me, take the take the thing off. Yeah. Uh, did it apply? Oh, it's on the black button. And, and you see this tentacle of ooze come out of it, and it's coming towards you, Orem, and, oh my god, it does uh, hit. <laughs> I guess. That's a nice roll. 22. Yeah, the real scary thing is it rolled a 2. <laughs> oh, boy. And, and Holy cow. You know, the hit that you took really wasn't too damaging, but it's all the acid that splashed out of the uh, the black pudding. Z goggles, they do nothing. Yeah, 
that's bad enough. Okay, Harry. Hey, Harry. I'm just trying to code a torch in real quick. The base attack stat for a torch, I imagine, is strength. And then is the damage just your uh, bonus to damage, or is it an improvised weapon damage, or what is that? Uh, I'm thinking probably improvised weapon. You don't have a bow, do you? I do, but that's not what my character's got in mind right now. <laughs> okay. Um... Imagine it'd be bludgeoning with the one fire uh, damage. Yeah, it'd be bludgeoning plus one fire damage. Okay, but is it a D6 like a club, or is it just your strength bonus? Uh, it's a 1D4 plus your strength bonus. One plus four. one fire damage. That works. Okay. That works. So I've got a short sword in one hand and the uh, torch. So the torch is in my primary hand. And I'm going to move up and attack. I'm going to uh, cast. Let's see what kind of thing this does here. Do you know what kind of damage Hunter's Mark is? I believe it's 1d6. Yeah, okay. I'm just going to cast Hunter's Mark with my bonus action and swing with my torch. Okay. So I hit with the torch. So the way I've done this is I use the uh, twoies. So I'll do the, the normal damage first. And then I'll do the damage of one fire. And then, uh, I since it's marked, I do the, uh, what do you call it? The Did Hunter's Mark. And I forgot to click that, so I'll just roll a d6. Yeah, you can. There you go. I'll take that off of me. And then I'll pass the turn. Alright, Briar will move up. He has his torch, but he can't get in there this turn. He has to wait until next. So he will just, with his free hand, he'll throw a dart at it. Good hit with the dart. As good as he could do. All right. Um, all right, let's hit him. So marking on. Uh, Damage. Hey. And then I'm going to use my bonus action to second wind. Mwah, mwah. Can I have you re-roll that? Would that be considered an ability check? Uh, I don't think so. It's just a heal. Yeah, but it's an it's ability just a, of yours, right? A bonus action ability? It's a bonus action, but it doesn't key, it keys off my uh, fighter level, I believe. 
So, so I, don't I don't actually know, know if, if it's it... considered an ability check because no, no ability is played into it. it. I, I think it has to be a d20 if you're rerolling something. Yeah, I think you're right. It does have to be that. Yeah. Okay. All right, I'm gonna cast another fireball. All righty. Okay, you hit, and it takes more damage. And it does seem to be affecting it, right? Yes. Okay, Avara. Okay, Harry, you see this tentacle black pudding come at you. He's at disadvantage. Oh yeah, it's on him. Alright, cool. <laughs> oh, it's, been, it's been so rare that... Uh... Yeah, neither one of them would have hit, unfortunately. <laughs> oh, it gets two attacks? Is... No, it's at disadvantage. But uh, the thing is, if he does hit, I get to I get to attack. I get to attack him back for hurting somebody else. Harry's going to swing out with the torch again. You do the, uh, hold on here before I do that thing here. I'll do Hunter's Mark before I apply the one damage, right? Now it should do a D6 plus one fire. Nope, it should only be one fire damage, though. The six were uh, clubbing or whatever damage type the thing is. So we're at six less, right? Uh, one fire plus the three damage from the torch, and then the six was rolled as uh, the hunter's mark. Oh, one damage less. Okay. All right. Well, I don't know if it's one damage less. I'm just saying the, the types. Without Hunter's Mark, I did three bludgeoning plus one fire, and then the six damage from the Hunter's Mark. Okay, yeah, I got it straight. Okay. Rye is going to scamper by. So he will hit it with the torch. Brave man. Should have been advantage, but that's okay. Um, I'll just roll actually again, just in case he crits. Yeah, not a problem. Uh, and then he will... He's wrapped his fist up in Damon's favorite club. So when the acid melts through it, you know, only Damon has lost anything. That's what happens when you miss. Uh, and then he'll spend a key point uh, to take another poke at it. Keep going. And when you hit with the war hammer, 
you notice that the blob just kind of loses cohesion and it just you know splashes back to the floor and uh, you know that area of the floor there is slippery but and hissing from the acid but the blob is not moving Excelsior. And Bri, while you're down there, why don't you make a uh, perception check? And you do notice the outline of what may be a secret door just to the south of you. Hey, I think I see something over here. And let's give you some XP. I'll just swap hands with the torch and the sword now. And I'm gonna unlock tokens and take the black pudding off the map. <laughs> what do we need for the next level now? It's 9,000? Somewhere around there? Uh, 6,500, I believe. That is if Damon's correct. <laughs> okay. So, yes, uh, you can see a, um, the outline of a door. And I will urge Orm to knock. Let's see. Avar is the only dwarf, right? Yes. Um, as you come close to the door uh, Avara uh, it opens automatically cool and um, you can see a dust filled room and judging by the amount of dust uh, this room has probably not been touched since the time of the dwarves that built this place and you can see these five green copper urns on platforms and they are overflowing with coins and gems and more. Take it all. Nothing good can come of this. How are we going to carry all this? <laughs> well, that was our... Well, that was our issue why we were going to say we are going to uh, give most of it back because there'd be no way we could carry it all. So, well, this this isn't this can't be the big room of... Uh, oh, no, probably not. Uh, yeah, no, it can't it's, be. It's, 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 we're done! Uh, Woohoo! Let's go! Yeah. <laughs> Let's just take this and go. Of the vision. <laughs> See you in a few months, guys. Are they really? Yeah. Really? yeah. One more time. One more time. I said, let's just take this and go. I'm satisfied. Are they real coins? 
Uh, yes, uh, they are real coins, and you know, sure. Oh, sure. Looking around Look at her, the, um, um, the around the around urns, the urns, you find thirty-three blue quartz, um, ten gold rings. Uh, you find a ring that uh, feels magical. Feels magical. Yeah. Uh, I will ritually identify that. I, I, and should I detect oh, magic? Yes. See if there's anything magical in here other than that ring. Because I'm thinking this is a trap. You're not even looking in the room. <laughs> Yeah, I know. Then he starts stuffing some gold rings on his fingers. Uh, uh, you do find uh, five Toralane Tor gems. Uh, there's 200 copper pieces, 650 silver pieces, and 250 gold pieces in that room. Nice. And, All right. Uh... Let's see. Uh, just a rough appraisal. The silver statue is probably worth about 250 gold pieces. Uh, the gold rings are 25 a piece. The quartz are 10 gold a piece. And then you have the one magical ring. I will ritually identify that. Okay. Um, Ritually identifying it, you find that it is a ring of warmth. When you're wearing it, you have resistance to cold damage. In addition, you and everything you wear and carry are unharmed by temperatures as low as negative 50 degrees Fahrenheit. And all that is now in the party sheet. Nice, at least we found something. We want to uh, hand out the ring and uh, just keep everything kind of together, and at the end of everything, we can just evenly divide that stuff up. Yeah, sounds good. And all yeah. total, that come out to 317 gold, which I'm going you to... You guys want to just roll a dice for the ring? But I wanted the copper to hand out to urchins. Well, I mean, like, you know, we can uh, hand out the ring, and but I mean, I don't know. I, I, I don't know how we want to uh, divvy that up. I don't know if we want to kind of, uh, like, add it as part of, like, the total treasure or just hand it out magic item per as, we, as come we come. Well, are we expecting any item? kind of cold attacks in this place? No. What we expect and what happened might be two very different things. Yeah, but if we are, then whoever would be most, uh, you know, would get the most advantage from the ring probably should take it. It's pretty much up in the air. Anybody could use the ring. Yeah, I don't think that's one that there's a clear advantage for anyone. Yeah, it's just fire resistance, right? Is that what it is? And, and survive in cold temperatures? Right, yeah, cold resistance. Cold. Oh, and cold resistance? Okay, nice. No, it's yeah. not fire resistance. Oh, it's just... Just cold. Okay. Okay, I misheard that. <laughs> Very warm. So all that is in the party inventory and uh, even taking the five copper urns. Now they're 15 gold each. Yeah, we nice could fill them with we could fill them with the fresco tiles. Okay, so you've got the 
three crumbling bridges going over to the other side. Uh, closer inspection of the hallway, there are no more secret doors on this side. So can we see anything specific about the bridges other than the massive gap or what's on the other side of the bridges? Uh, on the other side of the bridge, uh, you can see uh, other dungeon doors, one for each bridge. Looking at the ceiling, it doesn't look like there's any traps like guillotine blades or anything like that. To come... uh, no, you're not seeing any obvious signs of traps. Or, Could we or take the time to build something? You know what? I think I can I can make this if you want me to do it. We could tie a rope to that column and and that way we could get across that way. I think I'm strong is, enough just to jump it too. Got a jump spell if we need it. Jumping the column. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. DC 15 deck saving throw. Oh God. I got this. Yeah, I might not. <laughs> Same here. Hold my beer. Bry runs up. Are you taking a rope so you can see if you can tie it to the other side somewhere? Uh, it might be easier if you toss the rope right. when I get to the other side. Well, if we tie, the, if you take the rope first and uh, we've already got it tied to the column and you fall, you may not hit the ground. Why? What fun is that? Yeah, you don't have to take the whole rope, just take the end. If I, you know, if it snags on something and I fall, I'm blaming you. So he'll grab the rope and he'll go try to make the jump. <laughs> oh, that should make you roll with disadvantage for uh, holding on to the rope, but... You make the jump. I'll do a celebratory dance. There will be a lot of pelvic thrust. <laughs> but you do have a rope going around. Or Find somewhere to tie. The gap. Yeah, you can tie, you can anchor it to the center column there in the room. All right. And Bry, you can see a door that uh, you know looks like the rest of the. Um, doors that you've encountered in the dungeon. While they're figuring out what to do, I'll go politely knock on the door. So can we just go across the rope, or do we have to make the track? Um, how many are going to cross at one time? I'm one at a say time. One at a time. Okay. Uh, one at a time, and um, uh, when they start coming across, I'm going to jump up and start shaking the rope. <laughs> uh, yes, uh, I will. Uh, yeah, if you all make uh, dexterity saving throws. Oh, this is going to go horrible. 
like acrobatics or something? Uh, yeah, you could do uh, acrobatics, athletics, whatever you're good at. Oh, I'll go cool. with athletics. It still went horrible. You want it in the open? Uh, yeah, right. it, either or, it doesn't matter. Uh, Anna, uh, both you and Avara do manage to make it over. Uh, Orm shows off his athletic skills as he crosses the rope. What, on his hands, walking across it? Uh, absolutely. And so now all of you all are over there. Last one over dolls. <laughs> uh, w- would you say that all of you all have a more than a combined weight of uh, 150 pounds? <laughs> No. Open the door, bro. <laughs> <laughs> fine, fine. Brian will uh, it. And, and technically, you, uh, that is a cliff face, so you all cannot stand there nor cross to the other bridges. Other bridges. Okay, well then I guess we should have waited until the door was open so we could we don't have to stand on the bridge. Uh, I, I, I'm going to give you a little leeway. <laughs> yeah, we wouldn't have done that if we had known. <laughs> okay, uh, but yes, uh, Bri, you knock on the adamantine door and nothing happens. I wonder if we could steal the door. I was going to say, yeah, if it's adamantine door, can we like unhinge it? <laughs> That's a good idea. We'll come back later with like a full team and like deconstruct all these doors, these doors and replace them place. on our our place. Yeah, okay. that would be cool. For, forget the dragon heist. Let's just take this, the furnishings in this and... place. Let's see, somewhere to the. One. I mean, that big of a adamantine would be worth a fortune. <laughs> okay, Avara. Um, uh, once you come up behind Bry, you know, Bry's trying to get the door open while you're all crossing, and, uh, as you come up behind him, the door opens automatically. Bry mutters something impolite about dwarves under his brow. <laughs> and inside the room... You can see four sets of rusted plate armor, uh, minus the helmets. And, you know, they're standing in the corners of this 20 foot high room, and you can see cobwebs are covering each suit of armor. Um, you can see. Uh, Dwarvish runes on the are carved into the far wall, and I'm assuming that you can read Dwarvish, correct, Avara? Oh yeah. Uh, a secret never told will part uh, Jermothan's lips, and uh, you know that Jermothan is the Dwarven god of secrets. So someone needs to tell a secret. Okay. From your character, not from your personal your life. Personal. <laughs> right, yeah. I'm way, I'm way over here. here. Um, I cheated on a test in college Bard College. Yeah, is that is that a good enough secret? Uh, that is something that you have not previously revealed in the game, so therefore or... we will consider it to be true. Okay. And. I'm guessing none of the plate armor is actually in good enough shape to actually wear. Uh, no, it it is very rusted, and 
Var and Bra, I'm going to move you into the room. Uh, Harry and Orem, if you want to move up, nothing sinister is about to happen. Uh, and Anna, you reveal your secret and a trap door in the floor flips open and you can see um, a s spiral staircase descending down. Hmm. Do we want to check out the other rooms first? I think that's a good idea. Because, you know, maybe there will be not rusted plate mail armor. <laughs> you want me to jump that again? You just have to hold on to the row rope. And would we be able to get across to the other doors without having to go all the way? Uh, you have to cross the bridges in order to go over. Um, I'm not going to make you all do an athletics or acrobatics on the way back. Do we have to do anything for these narrow sections, or is it, you know... And uh, what uh, you're smart enough to realize that as long as you cross one at a time, you're probably safe. All right, I will let Orm go first this time because, you know, it makes more sense for him to be able to handle. Do, 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 do. <laughs> Might need a Vara up next just to have Dwarven presence. And That's true. A far Good idea. Okay. Uh, Avara, um, as you come over, uh, the door automatically opens. This place really likes to work. A room very similar to the other one. But you see this ten foot tall painted statue of an armored male dwarf. And he's wielding a battle axe. And he is wearing a mask. And he's standing at the back of this twenty foot tall room. And before the statue in the floor you see an adamantine trap door with a pull ring on one side and let's see um, being a dwarf I feel pretty sure that you would recognize uh, Gorm the dwarven god of uh, vigilance, also known as Fire Eyes. <laughs> now tell everyone who it is. Okay. So you got a statue and a trapdoor. Anything written in there? Uh, no writing at all. Might want to have somebody uh, with a keen eye take a look at this uh, statue. And or trapdoor. Probably not me. <laughs> Do I see anything in the room? Anything unusual? Uh, no, you do not. 
Everything so far reacts to your presence, so maybe you have to be the one to touch the trapdoor. Axe comes down and severs her hand. Well, if it's a dwarven place, it's more likely to come down on the head of the half orc than the uh, dwarf. Dwarf. Does Avara know anything, any stories about uh, Gorm have that would uh, sound like this situation? Uh, no, well, he he said the, the nickname is Old Fire Eyes. Look at the statue. statue. Yeah. Uh, looking at the statue, uh, it, it melds seamlessly with the floor, and it doesn't seem like uh, it can be toppled, and, you know, it kind of looks like it might e even be uh, impervious to damage. Are the, um, are the eyes, like, holes, or are they, like... Uh, the, uh, it, it's... Uh, it looks like a normal statue. Okay, I'm just wondering if there's like uh, like an empty hole where the eyes would be, or if it's like you know just uh, over. What no, there there's carved eyeballs. eyeballs. You want to try opening the trap door? I don't trust it for some reason. I trust it slightly more if it was a dwarf, that's all. I don't trust it at all. Should we check out the last room? What's the rest of the group say on this? on this door. Pull it open! Yeah, just pull it open. Searching for traps? Yes, Harry. Search it for traps. Okay, Harry. Um, how exactly would you be searching it for traps? Are you running your fingers around it? Are you looking at it? Uh, sure. I break open some thieves tools and I inspect the lock, the hinges, and I look for any mechanisms that might trigger as a result of it being open. So you are physically touching the trap door? Yes, sir. I am uh, touching it very lightly in a caressing motion. <laughs> Okay, um, Harry, as, as, as you're looking around and, you know, you're checking for traps, um, you, you run your fingers across the door, and two things come to mind, um, first of all, it, it doesn't appear like this is a real door. And the second thing is uh, that you need to uh, make a uh, dexterity saving throw, please. Harry's got the bad touch. Well, hey, you know what? I'm a half so I can reroll that. <laughs> Booyah. All that uh, talk about double ones on luck, I was sure. Uh, <laughs> uh, that halfling luck I uh, just saved you the axe uh, plate came uh, down these lightning these rays of magical fire spring from the statue's eyes and they zap well, that's the spot on the trap door that you were touching great it's a fake door it's a trap uh, yeah, you're you're fairly confident that it is a fake door. All right. Then. Although you know what? Why don't we push the statue over for shits and grins and see what's behind it? They said it was seamlessly built into the into the floor, so I don't think we could. We could try. It. Not the without like serious because... masonry work. The statue or the trapdoor? The statue. The statue. The statue. 
could try pushing on it, but I don't know if it'll go. Crickets next. I think Carrie and Anna can go do that. What would happen if you put a mirror up in front of its eyes and triggered it? Firebolts probably just hit the mirror. Break the mirror. mirror. Yeah. All right, yeah. we're leaving. I'm not going to mess with it. I think we found the way down. I think we should just go on. Yeah, well, let's just go see what's in the other room. If there's another trapdoor, we could ignore it. The door is on the floor. See if that door opens. Okay, Avara, as you approach the door, it swings open. And um, once again, uh, this room is uh, 20 foot high. Uh, it's adorned with these dust-covered frescoes uh, depicting dwarven smiths at work in their forges. There's an iron anvil sitting atop a raised stone block in the middle of the floor. And from both fixtures, they're just draped with cobwebs. Get the frescoes! I need more colored tiles. I was waiting for him to say make a saving throw. No. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, are you all checking them out, though? Check the frescoes out. Okay. I'm going to hold back at the entrance and watch them in case something bad happens. And can I get y'all to make a uh, perception check? Everyone that's in the room looking at a painting. Wow. Uh, Avara, uh, you and Anna... Uh, You're inspecting these frescoes, and you notice that the stone hammer that's being wielded by the smith in the painting on the southern wall there, um, that the hammer can be taken away from where it rests. What the hell? What the hell? So it's a physical hammer that looks like it's part of a painting, but it's actually there. Uh, yes, uh, it is an actual hammer. And, um, do you want to remove it? Sure. Uh, when you remove it, it leaves a hammer-shaped indentation into the wall. And etched onto the side of the hammer, um, are dwarvish ruins. And showing it to Avara... You know, let's. It says, "Let hearts be lifted, and battles won." And okay. that's what it says on the hammer. Uh, it does look like there are some uh, ruins on the anvil. You can see just. Bits and pieces that you know aren't so dust them off. Webs. And Avara, you read, "Let the hammer fall, and the anvil ring." Hit the anvil with the hammer. Oh Lord! The room clock. <laughs> Is that what you're doing? Sure. Okay. Uh, Take a page out of Harry's book. <laughs> uh, you know, you you smack the anvil really good. Uh, Harry, are you in the room? No, sir. I'm watching from outside the room. Uh, just double checking. Uh, I'm uh, I'm uh, I'm there to collect them and pull them out if something bad happens. 
you smack the hammer on the anvil. It's a really good hit. And, you know, that metallic ring just kind of reverberates around the room. And everybody but Harry starts feeling really good. And you all have been blessed with 10 extra temporary hit points. What are you what? I'm sorry. I said, what do you know? <laughs> then I'll put the hammer back. I feel the power of the hammer. Absolutely. Love getting hammered. It's hammer time. Stop. Then go back to the center room. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, it's nine o'clock. Uh, you need to go pick up your kids. Yep. Uh, I'll be AFK for about five or five or ten minutes. Depends uh, on how quickly he walks up. Tell you what, this is a good place to take ten. Okay. Sounds good. All right. See y'all shortly.
Hey, I'm back. As am I. So me. Okay, I'm all prep, uh... I'm ready. Easy map to prep. Okay, if it was daytime, although you were deep underground, <laughs> uh, the spot would be lit by streams of sunlight. Um, from your light spell and your torches, uh, you can see there's ornate columns supporting a 30-foot uh, high vaulted ceiling. And it's adorned with carvings of dwarves basking in the presence of their gods. Uh, you can see deep alcoves uh, lining the walls and you know as you round the corner uh, you can see one of them is piled with a vast golden treasure trove. You shiny! Absolutely. Lead on, Bry. No, it's okay. <laughs> Here he'll peek in. Uh, yeah, uh, you know, you've, you've got a much better view now of the, uh, of all, the, of all the treasure. Get it off me, get it off I still got a torch burning in my offhand. Uh, yes you do. I'll, uh, move cautiously up and glance into this alcove. And in that alcove, um... You can see that there are gems scattered along the floor. All right, and then I will uh, investigate the alcove to the north. Okay, uh, as you're stepping to the north, um, This aged dwarf comes walking out around the corner and uh, and he's clutching the staff that's carved and painted to resemble a pair of entwined dragons, one red and one gold. And, you know, despite his obvious age, his eyes are steady and bright, and, you know, he says, I wasn't expecting anyone. And, as you can see, the place is a mess. Uh, perhaps you should come back later, after I've tidied up a bit. 
what would be a good time for you? Well, you know, it, it, it would take me a while to tidy up and, and you know, uh, you all really shouldn't be here to begin with. Well, perhaps we could give you a hand. Would you need some assistance? No, I, I, I've got it. I've got it. But uh, you, you all should probably leave. You're, you're not supposed to be here. Um, my name is uh, Harry. What is yours? Uh... My name is Baroque Clanghammer. Harry sheaths his short sword and extends, walks forward, extending his hand to shake his hand. And, and you know, uh, slowly and kind of feebly, he sticks out his hand and shakes you, and he's like, "It's, it's good to meet you, Harry." Uh, what, what brings you all here? Oh, it's a long story. I glance back at Bry. Bry tells him absolutely everything. He starts. He just talks. Just talks for the next two hours. <laughs> Oh, bye. I offer drink and food to uh, to our guest as he uh, listens to the story of Brian. Uh, he he's like, uh, wow, that was a, a extremely long story for someone my age. Can you believe we have a ghost that serves drinks? I wrote a dragon. And the dwarf, you, you know, little one, I, I would like to see you ride a dragon. Although he wouldn't be calling you a little one because he's about your height. <laughs> well, we've told you our story. How about you tell us yours? Those look like, that looks like a fabulous staff. The dragons? Avara introduces herself in dwarvish. Well, uh, when you tell him everything, does that include... Uh, you know, the hunt for the dragons and wanting to return them to the city and... Yeah, Bri told, fact. Bri told him everything. No filter. Get up here in your school circle and talk to the man. You can't tell him from back there. I have a loud, booming voice. Yeah, if you're going to get eaten, you need to be closer. <laughs> and, yeah, you know, um, uh, you can see he's aware of what's going on as you're telling the story. And when you talk about Lord Never, Never Remember um, Him, he... You know, you can see recognition in his eyes, and, you know, uh, when you talk about uh, rescuing, uh, you know, Floon and how they thought it was Rainier and so forth, um, he's like, uh, yes, uh, I, I re met Rainier once, but he was only a child, and... You know, uh, it, th that's a pretty unbelievable story you told me there. And, y you know, I. I how Show do him I the know signet that ring. You're telling me the truth. Is he a dragon? Do you guys think he's a dragon? Are you he's a totally dragon? Over. He's totally a dragon. Are you a dragon? Uh, he kind of laughs. And, Is your name Oranex? Uh, he's like, you know, I was uh, hired by uh, Lord Never Remember to uh, protect his vault. And now here you are telling me that you're uh, 
agents of his son and so forth and you want the gold you know show him the family ring we're good people it's not like we want it for ourselves um So I could buy a lot of beer with that much gold. No, we've got enough patrons to keep you in beer for the rest of your life. Think of how much good we could do for with for this for the city. Yeah, Waterdeep kind of sucks. Okay, we're okay. trying really hard to show our kindness. Okay, Bri, uh, since, since you are the uh, unofficial storyteller, although I guess it's been made official now, um, let's make a uh, persuasion check. Oh, oh, hang, hang on, on, hang on. I want to assist by uh, being captivated by Bryce's story so I can give him advantage. We also have guidance. All right. We really don't want to fight this dragon. Can we I really don't want to be eaten by this dragon. Can I help Bry? Uh... You know, the, the dwarf just starts thinking, and, uh, y you know, you handed him uh, Rainier's family ring, and he, he's looking at it, and, you know, in, in the, I think I was seduced by my greed, because I really wanted to be able to uh, move in water deep but you know the dragon ward prevented me and you know I I think I always knew where the gold come from but I, I just didn't want to accept it and you know um, I, it's, I, it's I, not I, your fault uh, I agree with you that the uh the gold should be returned to the people of the city. But not the not the militia or the judges. They're bad people. Misguided. Well, fine, fine, well, fine. Uh, you know, there, there's corruption in all organizations, but uh, I'm sure that you all will find the right people to give it back to where it'll do the most good. And... The Zendarum, right? So he's just going to us. And uh, he walks over and he, he points at the um, at the alcove of gold. I, I have a special request. Yes. I mean, I'm, I'm really glad you're asking to return this gold to the uh, the city and that, but is there something that you can give us, like a namesake or something that uh, of, of you that we can tell your story and place in our tavern? Oh, my, my story is not worth telling. It, it's been a long and boring time that I have guarded this vault. Well, how about we leave an empty seat for you at the bar? Uh, that, that would work. And, uh, you, you know, this alcove of gold, um, 
and he's pointing at it with his staff and he's like uh, you're free to take it as long as you return it to the city and the the gemstones behind you you cannot take with you those are mine Okay. Okay. Can, can we make several trips? That's a lot of gold. Unless you know another way to get it there fast. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, actually, piled in that alcove are 500,000 dragons. And the combined weight of which is 10,000 pounds. You don't have like a magical container in there, do you? Uh, no, son, uh, I wish I did, and, you know, since you are here to return the dragons to the city, uh, my watch is up, and I am finally able to, uh, leave this boring place. <laughs> Can I ride you? He looks... He looks over at you and goes, I'm a dwarf. Why would you want to ride a dwarf? I don't know. You could give me a piggyback ride. No. <laughs> Fry pouts. And, you know, the, the dwarf tells you that the staff and the gemstones was his payment for guarding the gold. Would you like to make a donation to our tavern? Uh, I, I, I just gave you half a million dragons. A million dragons. I think that's yeah. enough. He gave that to the city. That's the people's. Right? <laughs> Let's not press our luck. <laughs> yeah, Orem will thank. Uh, Barak and uh, be like, well, might as well get started. How much would it, uh, a couple bags of holding cost? Uh, uh, we'll look that up here in just a minute. We probably uh, don't have to carry it out ourselves at this point. We can probably go to the authorities and say... Yeah, yeah right. I'd like to take an inventory, though. Sure. sure. One, two, three. We'll come back in a few months, see how you're doing. Yeah. Did you put it in stacks of ten? Uh, I like it. Uh, the treasure parcel said, one pile of gold. <laughs> <We're at 500 laughs> oh, okay. 500,000 gold pieces. <laughs> it's basically so much gold that they're not going to give it to us. <laughs> Uh, but it is, uh, yeah, one pile of gold is now in the party street. And you get uh, that side, I'll get the other side. Lift, lift, lift with your legs, not your back. That dude is totally a dragon, right? Yeah. Yeah, they said that they need to hold the staff face. or something, right? Like. Once it touches them or something, they're able to walk through the ward. Uh, yeah, uh, he had been holding the staff makes him immune to the dragon ward. And yeah, whoever, so he must be a dragon then, yeah. And whoever yeah. he touched, well, you don't have to be a dragon to wield it. But whoever he touches with it of the dragon type is also immune. Hmm. Okay. And, How many years has he, he been down here? Uh, not knowing the true timeline, I'm going to say a few years since, uh, years since uh, yeah. Lord Never Remember fell out of grace. Well, well, since Renier was like a kid or something, right? So Yeah, so we're right, yeah. 20, 25 years. Right, so that's probably wouldn't seem like a long time to him. Since dragons live so long. I don't know. 
Seems kind of boring, regardless. regardless. Yeah, right. Yeah, uh, just garden and eating the occasional gem. <laughs> and let's see. Okay, so I suppose we could just, uh, once, you know, he's made a way, or, you know, we'll tell him that there'll be people coming in to claim it for the city, workers and such, uh, so that he can, uh, Van Moose if he wants to get out of the way. Yes, he will continue to guard the uh, treasure until you all return with uh, whatever authority figure. And, okay. Uh, okay. Uh, he would appreciate uh, being able to uh, leave hassle free. <laughs> Well, he well, might he want to just leave him. now, then, right? Yeah. Yeah, let him guard it till we actually get somebody back in case somebody somebody shows up. Right. Yeah. I think he'll probably want to be gone before. Like he's a, a gold dragon. Me. Those are good. We'll yeah. s we'll yeah. stomp we'll stomp our boots really loud when we're coming back in and give him time to throw. Somebody could send him a message with a message spell. I think I... Yeah, I've got a message. And, and, you know, being a dwarf, uh, it, you know, you could even pass him off as uh, one of your guards that you left there. Because outside of you... Oh, yeah, and I suppose. Lord, never remember. Uh, no one knows about the dragon. He's a virus addled grandpappy. So, you know, he's staying there and you're all making your way out of the vault and, you know, trying to determine who you should go. Well, if oh, we're going to give it to the it. figure, I might as well go see the my contact with the Lord's Alliance. Mm -hmm. That seemed way too easy. We've also got Laurel Silverhand. She's in charge of the city. Let's give it to Xanathar. Yeah, I figured the. Let's I not. figure. I figured she would be to have contacts in the, in the Lord's Alliance, though. Like, kind of like I could go through the Lord's Alliance to get to her. She would be part of the Lord's Alliance because well, okay, she well, would there, be there, the there water we go. Would be, she would be the representative. All right. Well, then that seems like a pretty obvious path, then, to get it to her. So I'll head out to, uh, once we, you know, finish our area and whatever, whatever we need to do to prep the area, and um, I'll go meet with, uh, see if I can contact Jalister. I think we should resurrect Tobin Blackstaff and give it to him. That guy was cool. Okay, as you all make your way up to the stairs, you finally emerge from, uh, uh, you know, the, um, you go up to the top level and then you come back down to the main floor. And as you're coming down the stairwell, you are suddenly aware that you are no longer alone. All right. And Just there's the it out first. So, let's make them initiative rolls. Could you share the map again? I close that one. Oh, sorry. There you go. And he 
is going to run up. 17. Oh, what the hell. 17 is going to cast a... Uh, Sacred Flame at Bry, which Bry succeeds, and he's going to move north. I'll stick out my tongue and put my thumb on my nose and wiggle my fingers out. gonna start casting a spell at Harry and actually hits Harry with an inflict wound spell and Harry takes some necrotic damage. That was a touch spell, no? Ah, shit, you're right. It is. Here. He moves up and then touches you. <laughs> I thought he was for caster. Damn it. And... Then it's Debray. Debray will pummel the... Pastor in front of him. You're a very bad band. And then you'll spend a key point to punch him again. Four not. Okay, he is going to cast spiritual weapon going to try and attack Bry with the spiritual weapon, which is a hit. Hooray for the blessing! And Orem, you are up. 
All right. I'm gonna go right for this guy. I think I'll stay here. They're all gonna throw s spells at me. I want them to move for it. All right, Harry. Okay, so Harry's in dreaded ambusher mode. He's gonna do uh, two short sword attacks on cultist fanatic number 22. And then he'll go into his offhand. So here comes the first short sword. Short, short, short. Isn't number 22 dying already? I don't know, it's got a green dot. Yeah, it was the cultist, not the cleric guy here. I think 15 dying. Yeah, it was 15, it's dead. Dying. Dead. So the first one misses. Here comes the second. Oh, I get to reroll that halfling luck. That's better. That hits, and that gets the effect for the dreaded ambush. -er. And then I'm going to swing with my torch. I find it hilarious. You still have a torch in your offing. Uh, yeah. And that does a little bit of damage, and then I got to add the fire effect. There we go. If we come across any ring race, you'll be glad of it. Okay, number 10. Number 10 is going to move up and try a scimitar at Bry, which misses the Barra. Two can play the spiritual weapon game, so I'm going to put it right uh, to the east of number 2, so it's between 2 and 7. Two and seventeen. Uh, caddy cornered down. Yep, right there. Well, I've got bribed party two for some reason. Hey, I'll count it. Jerk. So would that a, was that a hit or a hit bra? Uh, let's see. Yeah, it would have hit a fanatic. So that's the damage on him. And for my action, I'm going to use a cantrip. I don't know if that actually... Do yeah, what? it didn't actually seem to go on him. Just You just have to probably drag and drop it on the icon on the map. I got it. I did it. He succeeded. <laughs> 
I'm all just right, gonna right. use a firebolt on this guy. I think I'll just end my turn there. Okay. Uh, 16. It's gonna run up. And we're gonna try a scimitar on Aurum. Ooh. Have a little bit of damage, Orum. <laughs> Don't have any damage. And nah, I'm good. And that is in range. Okay, 14 is going to cast a spell at Harry. Let's actually grab the right part. And Harry, for a minute, you can feel yourself being held against your will, but you are uh, able to resist it. And yeah. Uh seventeen. He's gonna step up. And that's second level. And he's going to try a hold person against Orum. And Orum. <laughs> you failed, brother. Womp womp. And 22. You know, he enjoyed that so much. Yeah, we're going to attack Harry with an inflict wounds again. And Harry's able to dodge out of the way. Bri, you're up. Right, Bri will scamper through to flank 22. Hmm. He changes his target to the cultus. Ha ha ha. Ugh. Um, yeah, I think I'll save the key point this time. thing he's gonna do is move his spiritual weapon down and take a swing at Bry, which misses and I jump over it and 
land on top of it. <laughs> He's going to follow it up with a sacred flame, which uh, you succeeded. Okay, Orum, uh, you're paralyzed, brother. <laughs> yep. I think you get, if I'm not mistaken, he gets another save at the end of his turn. I think so. Yeah. Yeah, I believe you do. Uh, all right. So just, uh, just a straight up wisdom saving throw. Wisdom saving throw. And you are no longer paralyzed. All right, but that's like that's all my actions, right? Yep. Because it's at the end of my turn, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Harry's gonna swing his short sword at the cultist. Good hit. And then with uh, Harry's bonus action, he's going to mark Cultist 14. And I'm going to pass. Okay, first off, the spiritual weapon will swing. Whose spiritual weapon is this? It's up. That one is you. No, I mean the other one. Who's what is the caster uh, that has that's that? Cultist up? number two. Fat fanatic number two. Oh no, the spiritual weapon just took completely. Move to there. You're a forge? Yep. Is your magic, uh, is it weapon that your bonus yep. is on? Okay. I recast it on my weapon every morning. Yeah, I really like that. I really like that subclass. That was a good roll. No kidding. Do you want to move or stay where you're at? Sixteen is gonna try a scimitar again at Orem. Fails horribly, and he's going to advance up. Uh, fourteen. Did 16 just move up? Yeah, 16 did. Wasn't he right above 2? Yeah. So that means uh, I get an yeah, attack of opportunity? No, because yeah. he never left. No, it's in 5e. You have to leave the area. It's not just moving. Uh, but he would provoke from Avara. He would provoke from Avara, yes. Sorry, you're right. Good catch.
and 14 seeing that uh, he's gonna cast inflict wounds and try to touch Avara which misses and He is going to do a spiritual weapon. At Orem, which misses, and Bry, you're up. Bry is going to go occupy the square with the spiritual weapon. So I'm just putting on the one. And then he will flurry of blows, cult fanatic 14. Alright, I'm going to move forward five. Drop the hammer. Blah. I'm going to action surge. Go again. And, uh, can, uh, does, uh, does spiritual weapon provoke? No. No? Nope. no? Alright, then I want to move right here. When, yeah, alright. So Harry will move up, and uh, he's going to attack his marked target with the short sword. And he misses. He'll follow up with the torch, which he hits. Let me add that in. Oh, I shouldn't have done add three back because it kept adding. It should just do one fire. Got it. Spiritual weapon to there first. Spiritual weapon concentration? No. Nope. Wow. And Anna, you're up. I plan on doing something else, but 14 didn't die first. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna move up uh, to behind Avara and um, 
yeah, I guess I'll uh, do another fireball. And 14 falls to the ground. And 17. Okay, he's going to slide his spiritual weapon in first. It misses Orem. And then he is... going to cast Inflict Wounds and try and touch Orem. Which misses as well. Right. Yeah, uh, then he'll use the last of his key points to flurry. And 17 drops to the ground. Uh, is that all of them? That is all of them. Search them. Yeah, and I also have an idea uh, before we leave. I think there could be more waiting outside. I was thinking I'd like to uh, disguise myself as one of them and go check it out. Uh, I've got the... Um... Uh, yeah, you can do that with no problem. Okay, cool. And let's see. Yeah, uh, other than scimitars, none of them, scimitars and daggers, uh, there is nothing worth anything on them. All right. And let's see. Um, On one of the cult fanatics, um, does have a uh, a piece of paper with the Casa Lanterns um, emblem on it. You know their wax seal and so forth. It has been opened. And, uh, you know, it's relatively mundane correspondence, but, you know, you do think that these men are probably Castle Lantern employees or followers or whatever you would like to consider them. Next up. Okay. 
So just uh, just to be careful, I'm gonna use this guy itself and uh, go look outside and see if there's any more. Uh, yes, uh, you walk outside and the coast is clear. You're not seeing any and signs of activity on the street or immediately surrounding the building. Okay, never mind. Alright, so do we want to leave like half of us here while the other half goes inform proper authorities? Probably a good idea. In case they in sneak case in they behind, sneak us, behind us, you know? Yeah, right. Can we close the doors door back? Or we could have one of us go, or... Wait, hold on a second. Let's see what message does. Quick sure we can... Oh, okay, no, uh, Yes, uh, the dwarf will assist you in closing the door. Does he tell us how to get back in otherwise? Yeah. Without having to go get uh, another set of bagpipers? Uh, yes, he, he gave you a secret to get back into the door. So, uh, what proper authorities are you going to? Uh, I'm going to go where? meet with, yeah, Jalister and see if I can get an audience with uh, silver hand or or at least a message to her or something uh yes uh your message uh does indeed get delivered to her which uh prompts a uh personal response from her uh she is uh Definitely interested in meeting you and reclaiming the treasure that the former open lord stole from the city. And, Excellent. Uh, long story short, uh, she ends up meeting with you and uh, several wagons full of guards and <laughs> Uh, you take him back to the vault, and you know, uh, as you promised the dwarf, you know, you uh, kind of played off that you know he was just like a guard or something, you know, a small party of your group, and you let him go on his way. Um, she is ecstatic to see, you know half a million golden dragons and um <laughs> yeah she calls the guards in and she starts the process of emptying of removing the gold from the vault and you know she's just heaping praise on you and telling you all that you all have done such a great service to the city. I'll like, off, I'll like offhandedly like as we're just like loading this on like during ca a casual conversation perhaps indicate that maybe like some of the this gold could go to as a as a little bit uh, of a raise to the city watch and maybe hire some more city watch you know no. just trying to just trying to maybe a towards. ladder speed. You, yeah, yeah. I, I might mention maybe. I, I mean, if one comes up, absolutely, I'll I'll, I'll mention it. But uh, I do want to, like, you know, just kind of offhand to be like, well, the city watch, you know, like the, if there was more of them, there'd be the, maybe we could uh, stomp down on all this uh, gang warfare that's going on, and Boom, also say awesome. that a lot of the city watch guys, you know, they're they're overworked. Use a they could use a raise or something. And, and you you know you're hearing voices of agreement. Uh, from the city watcher helping carry out all this damn gold. Ooh. And, uh, uh... I agree with Brian. Lady Silverhand, y you know, uh, you all have just done a great service to the city of Waterdeep. And, you know, as such, uh, being the 
upright citizens that you are and doing the right thing, you all deserve a little bit of a finder's fee. Now I'll say like, oh, well, normally we couldn't possibly accept, but it's he good for the it's for good us. for the morale of the city to see that you know right actions get rewarded. So to promote <laughs> such an obvious uh, an obvious good good gracious to maybe inspire other good attitudes, we'll accept the finder's fee. <laughs> and she allows you to keep one tenth. Wait, Ooh. so 50,000? <laughs> uh, that is correct. <laughs> All right, Abara, we're going to go get some uh we're going to go get some uh plate. We're going to get magic plate. Hells yeah. And um uh, j just on the offhand, uh should you have Stolen the gold. Um, word would eventually get out, and emissaries of the Harpers, the Lord's Alliance, and the Order of the Gauntlets come to ask you that you know the gold be returned to Waterdeep. If you refuse to give it up, you would be stripped of any membership. And you would quickly find yourself in political hot water. The Lords of Waterdeep would charge you with the crime of robbery against the citizens of the city. It would be one month of hard labor plus damages equal to the value of the stolen currency plus 500 gold pieces. <laughs> We're not really yeah. robbing the people of Waterdeep, though. We're robbing Lord Never. Never. Yeah. And if you tried... This doesn't sound like much of a heist. <laughs> uh, if you tried to flee the city, uh, you would be apprehended and imprisoned by the city guard. If you managed to escape, the Harpers and the Lord's Alliance would pursue you tirelessly. <laughs> I've always said laws and D and D do not go together. <laughs> so, the next morning in Waterdeep, uh, once again, you all have made the front page of every broadsheet in the city. They're all talking about what heroes. Can we get like an illustration of of us like uh like they have when cops, cops do great big drug busts where they're all standing around the loot and like flexing and being like really manly? That's what we need. Uh, yes, uh, and you know, uh Lady Silverhand being uh um, you know, a politician, there's always a photo op. So, you know, you know. <laughs> You've got the You've sketches, got... and you're we'll get a fresco on the wall of our bar. <laughs> we'll we'll name a drink after her or something. <laughs> I whip to commemorate my, the day. I whip up my chicken feather boa. Don't forget the dragon chair. That was a dragon, right? Uh, yeah, that that was a dragon, and. I'm going to pass your gold out, and I'm going to add a few more just to clear it out. We didn't get eaten by it, so that's a good thing. Uh, absolutely, and because you did not get eaten by it, uh, I am going to award you the experience points. <laughs> All right. For that, I don't even know how many hit points an adult gold dragon would have had, but it would have not been. Uh, I'm thinking they must be like at least like a CR nine or something. <laughs> at least maybe twelve. Uh, CR seventeen, two hundred seventeen. Oh, jeez. Yeah. 
How much? 263 hit points. Ouch. Yeah, it was worth uh, 18,000 experience points. Oh but man, we're like all... 304 experience away. Really, really, really close. <laughs> and that's all I have for tonight. All right. Do you want to carve up the rest of what's in our party sheet? Or leave it? I would uh, say we'd sell everything except maybe the Ring of Warmth and then figure out who wants... Yeah, unless anybody specifically for whatever RP reasons wants, like like if they want to take their share of the statue or the, the, or the yeah. gems or something. Other than that, I'd say sell any anything we don't want with the exception of the ring. Yeah. Wow, yeah. we already got our cut of the loot. Oh, yeah. Okay, so no one wants any of the ring. I'm sure somebody wants the ring of warmth. Yeah, so I mean, somebody should get it. Do we want to uh, roll uh, off or? Yeah, let's just do a roll off. All right. Why don't we leave D20. it for next week when everyone's here? Oh yeah, that's right. Damon's not here. So everything except the ring of warmth, which I'm gonna pass to Bry real quick just to get it out of the party sheet. And since you all are popular in the city, uh, I'll give you uh, really good exchange rates for what you're selling. And I'll, I'll total it gives you another uh, 2164 of gold. All right. Clear that out and crazy. Ring of warmth goes from Bry back to the party sheet. Okay. Same time next Monday. Cool. Definitely. Now yep. We'll yep. Figure out why the uh, Castle Lanners wanted to kill you and. Who was uh, responsible for uh, Rainier getting shot in the back? I'll say we mentioned that to Larry. Say what? Did we mention to Larry all the note we? Which, what, what note specifically? specifically. The one that indicated the cast lanterns were. Oh, the cast lanterns. Right. Yeah. Yeah. We should have. Yeah. We would definitely have told them about that. Yeah. Probably. Them and the guard. Yeah. Uh, yes, you would have uh, pointed out the cast lanterns note. Get the authorities working on our side. Well, and hopefully if we have to do something against them not get hung by the city because they're not right. I, I'm just trying to avoid other scoldings <laughs> yeah good idea I'm less concerned about scoldings than death hmm. like if all the guard are like hey we're making more money because these guys like help, like you know threw in a good word for us maybe we won't get harassed as much when we have to kill somebody in the streets Oh, absolutely. And if you can find a, uh, if you can find and prevent the gang war, which, uh, you know, all the gang war was over the stone anyway. It's not good for business to have, like, people outside our shop getting killed all the time. So, the gangs are probably not going to fight one another now as much as they're just going to attack you. It got very quiet. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> just beat them to death with our sacks of gold. 
absolutely. Uh, but we will see you all next Monday. Thank you for a uh, great hey, game. Uh, Have yep. a good one. All right. All right. See you later. See you. Later. See you. See you. See you. See you.